let's bring this back to Africa. There have been so many comparisons between Greece and our neighbors up north Zimbabwe. Yeah. Uh, many people saying that uh, Greek now joins the ranks of Zimbabwe. We've been hearing this since Sunday. Fair? Uh, fair or not, I think it's not a wrong assessment. Um, Greece has been almost reduced to a barter economy. That, that hasn't happened in any industrialized country. I think the, the best comparison for Greece is Argentina. They were in a similar situation in 2002. They defaulted on their debt. Uh, they are still struggling with the consequences because the banking system is so tightly linked with the government, which is one of the lessons that we should draw. Don't mix uh, banks and government too much because governments don't necessarily know how banks work and they use them for refinancing and any kind of things that banks are not made for. Um, but because of this tight link, it's very difficult to actually get credit going to help fund new uh, firms and new investments. So the banks are very constrained. They can't really operate freely and they can't create new jobs. So there can't be growth coming out of this easily. That's why people say it's, it's, it's quite possible that they will go down a, a path of Zimbabwe. Um, that's a very hard and very long way. Uh, I think it's difficult to predict that this will happen. I think Argentina is the more appropriate comparison. If we look at it from a South African perspective, is there something that we can take away? Lessons that we can learn to ensure that perhaps, hopefully, we don't end up in, in a similar situation? You've mentioned uh, the importance of the separation of banks and government. How do we fare? I think there are two other lessons that we, uh, that we should learn from, uh, from the Greek situation. The first one is that if you keep spending um, and you don't collect the taxes for it and you spend more than you, than you can afford, and you don't spend wisely, so you spend on consumption, on making yourself feel better by buying a new car or increasing public sector wages because it will gain you a few votes in critical metropolitans. That's not a good way to spend this money because the debt is not invested properly. It's, invested, it's, it's just consumed. Uh, it should be invested into infrastructure, ports, roads, rail, schools, which is quite critical for South Africa. So investment should go, uh, debt should go into investments and not into consumption. That's the biggest lesson. And South Africa is not doing well on this front. We have, a, we have a twin deficit, which means we have a deficit in the budget and we have a deficit in our current account. And the combination of this is if we don't spend it wisely, we will not be able to pay it back. Um, and that's a, that's, that's, a, that's a dangerous situation. I think the even more dangerous situation comes from the rise of populist parties, in particular populist left-wing parties. We have seen that with Syriza in Greece. We have seen it with Cinque Stelle in, in Italy, with Podemos and Ciudadanos in Spain. So it happens all over Europe. And the main criticism here, so the main driving force of this is that there was a transfer of wealth from future generations, from young people towards old people, towards previous generations. This transfer of wealth happened underneath the radar. But people now realize 50% youth unemployment, both in South Africa and in Greece, uh, people start to realize, wait, something happened here. W what happened with our future? We need to repay this debt, but we don't have a job. We can't actually create our own lives. We, we don't have a livelihood. And that's a massive problem. That leads to rise of left-wing parties, which promise all kind of social niceties that they know they cannot afford and that they know will not work. And uh, the big risk for South Africa is that uh, unless we address this problem of wealth transfer from the young towards the old generation, there will be a continuing rise in populist left-wing parties. Um, and if you follow the debates in parliament, they have not gotten more constructive since the onset of the EFF. Mm. Let's talk a little bit more about the EFF because so many of their principles um, ring true to what we're talking about. For instance, the nationalization of mines and also um, the redistribution of land or land appropriation without compensation. Talk to us about that. Okay. I'm very concerned about this because I've seen this in German history. When you talk about expropriation, it's one of the worst things that, that can happen because it creates massive uncertainty. When you talk about the redistribution of land, the nationalization of mines, all these things have happened in Germany's past in the 1920s, in the 1930s, and they led to horrendous outcomes. Um, South Africa will not go to this extreme, but any kind of tendency like this is bad. Um, the problem with the EFF is not that their, uh, their policies are controversial, it's that their policies have been tried and they don't work. And they, um, they lie to the people. They don't tell them the truth. They don't tell them, this has ha th we have tried these things in, in the past, in history. It hasn't worked. And there's just 
promises and promises and there's absolutely no backing to this. Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to gain a few votes here and there by promising the people what they want to hear. Uh, and it's a very difficult task for the government to actually explain you need to be more patient. It has been 25 years, but still we are not where we need to be in order to, to have a prospering economy. You need to be more patient and we, we will address the problems in this and this order. That hasn't happened. So it's, it's a very difficult situation um, and we need to be very wary of these mm -hmm. uh, populist promises. The EFF points, however, to South America where they say actually these are policies that can be implemented in, in pointing to, to uh, South American countries where they say it does work. Well, you can look at Cuba, you can look at Venezuela, you can look at Colombia, you can look at Argentina. Uh, in all those countries, things like that have been tried. In none of these countries, is ha it has worked. Um, so this, this idealism that, that they bring is, is, not funded, uh, is not founded in, in any kind of reality. It's, it's not what, what happens around the world. It's a make-believe that it's, a, it's an ideology-driven make-believe that they indulge themselves in.